Thank you for coming despite your busy schedules. I really appreciate your keen interest in the GIC. Uh, I am Jung Kang Young, a volunteer here at the GIC. Uh, before the talk begins, please make sure your cell phones have been turned off or switched to silent mode. Now let's begin. Uh, Planet Earth is now undergoing many dire circumstances. Among them, environmental issues have become the most serious, as fossil fuels are used. And the consequences of environmental pollution are seen through the full ice caps melting, resulting in the increased elevation of sea levels. Um, as, uh, as a result, several small and beautiful island countries are being submerged. One of those countries is Tuvalu. Tuvalu's Tapka and Southern Virginia Islands have already disappeared and this danger is ongoing. So we're here to share the reality that not only Tuvalu but people all around the world face is Chunye Kim. Uh, she's current member of the International Committee at the Korean Federation for Environmental Movement and has more than 15 years of experience working as the Director of International Affairs at KFEM. Now let's welcome our speaker Chunye Kim with a big round of applause. is a big issue and that there's a global security issue we are we are we are we are facing and uh, under that situation I went to uh, Tuvalu. Tuvalu is the uh, most vulnerable country in the world from the climate change and then I went to a uh, climate change I went to uh, Tuvalu and then uh, I told the people about their thinking about the climate change and so on like this and then uh, in that time um, we super as media we are, we know we recognize Tuvalu is the uh, how do I say submerging submerging from the climate change. I heard a lot of that issue from the mass media. And then when I went to the Tuvalu, I realized that's the real real issue. Climate change is not the it's not it's not the it's not the talk anymore. That's the real happening in the world. And then in that time. We need to do something for the for the Tuvalu and then for the island like that. So uh, today my session will be you could see the documentary first. It lasts like the 15 minutes, something like that, and then at the world we could we could you could you could give me a question and I could answer like that. If you see the documentary first, and then you could recognize what is real happening in Tuvalu and then what we can do as a local person who live in Hwangdu. So uh, that's my uh, lead talk, and then you will see the uh, uh, documentary. The heavy waves suddenly beat upon the seashore. Finally, the waves are hit by the raging waves. The cars in the garage had no way to escape from the raging waves. Everything in the house was flooded. The people were puzzled after seeing all the islands in Tuvalu flooded with seawater. Seawater even gushes from the ground. This is Tuvalu, where disasters occur every year due to climate change. The seawater utterly spoiled everything in the house. Despite these disasters happening every year, all Tuvaluans have decided never to leave their homeland. And do you want to stay in Tuvalu or do you want to go to another country? Stay in Stay in Tuvalu. Uh, I don't want to stay in Tuvalu. Ah, I see. I see. Stay. Stay. Of course. So you 
you want to stay in Tobago, uh, continuously, or you want to leave another country? Uh, stay in Tobago. Okay. No, I stay in Tobago. The people of Tuvalu are faced with a serious threat from climate change. Some scientists have predicted that the islands of Tuvalu may possibly disappear in the next 50 years due to climate change. But the people of Tuvalu do not want to leave here. What should they do to beat the upcoming disaster and live peacefully? to go to Tuvalu to see the impacts of climate change. The only flight to Tuvalu departs from Fiji just twice a week. Tuvalu is the name for eight islands which are located in the South Pacific. Ms. Chuni Kim, who is in charge of international affairs for a South Korean environmental organization, is going to meet the people of the island nation. She wants to let the international community know the truth, that the islands of Tuvalu have been sinking due to climate change. This is Funafuti, the capital island of Tuvalu. It is an island 7 kilometers in length. 5,000 people out of the total population of 10,000 in Tuvalu live on this island. The land is only 3 meters above sea level. How can they live on the islands just above the sea level? Watching an airplane, which comes to the island twice a week, gives Tuvaluans pleasure. It was the simplest procedure she ever had in any airport in the world. It takes only 30 minutes to go to the other end of the island by motorcycle. The people in the streets are full of smiles and happiness. Coconut trees along a beach by the Blue Sea give a typical image of the South Pacific. People live in simple houses with fruit trees in the garden for their own family. is going fishing. It is so simple to catch fish. When she sets a net along the beach, children play around it to drive the fish to the net. They can catch enough fish for their own family in only 30 minutes. Though they can't eat raw fish. The most delicious way of eating fish is to cook with coconuts which are abundant on the island. After drinking coconut juice, 
They use the coconut milk from the inner skin of the shell as a great ingredient for cooking. The meat is ground from the shell, and the coconut pulp is squeezed in the cloth, leaving only pure milk. It is completed as the coconut milk is added to the fish, which is already clean. Ota is a traditional staple food for Tuvaluans. The coconut is not only for humans. Coconuts can be good food for pigs. Those who have a few pigs are considered rich in Tuvalu. There is no security facility at the Funafuti airport. People use the runway as a playground. Though the runway is full of happy people at the moment, there are times when an unwanted guest appears for the last several years. It is the king tide which washes away Tuvalu from November to February every year. The tide sweeps the whole island. The island of Funafuti, which is nearly three meters above sea level, is swallowed up by the king tide. Though there were king tides in the past, the level of damage to people's livelihoods cannot compare with before. The sea level rise caused by climate change poses a great threat to the life of the people of Tuvalu. The small island nation of Tuvalu in the South Pacific is suffering from climate change due to greenhouse gases emitted by industrialized countries. Those small island nations in the Pacific, including Tuvalu, have emitted only 0.03% of greenhouse gases and don't have much responsibility for climate change. The people of Tuvalu have to suffer from the king tide every year. We researched the damaged area to understand the impact caused by sea level rise there. We could see many big coconut trees uprooted by coastal erosion. The coconut tree is not the only victim from disasters of climate change. <coughs> this is the Bulaka garden. The root of Bulaka used to be a staple food for the people of Tuvalu. However, lots of leaves have strangely withered up. Not only leaves, but roots and stems are drying up as well due to salt water intrusion.
그냥 잘 자라면은 저기 바나나이 저런 것처럼 잘 자라 저렇게 자라 저런 크게 자라는 게잘 자라는 건데 여기 아래를 파면은 이제 뿌리가 있는데 그 뿌리를 가지고 매일 매일 아침 어 저기 뭐야 그 어, 같이, 매일 아침 주식으로 사용을 했는데 요즘에는 이렇게 지금 지금 길게 날게 아주 잘 자라지도 않고 이렇게 때문에 사람이 좀 먹지도 않는다 보다 밑에 있는 뿌리를. Even the food culture of the Tuvalu people has been changed because of the disaster of the Pulaka caused by climate change. We wanted to see the impacts on the other islands. Reverend Amatinga Lusama kindly took us to the island of Tepuka. The sea water was so clean and clear. The emerald green sea belongs to the island of Tepuka with the blue sky. What a beautiful paradise it is. However, as we got closer to the island, the reality was far from a paradise. Many coconut trees had fallen down, uprooted. Uh, the island of Tepuka on Funafuti, and behind me you can see the pandanas and the island are suffering from a water shortage because of a longer dry season. People have to store rainwater, which used to be abundant. The stored water is used not only for drinking water, but also for other daily needs. Also, in order to supplement the insufficient water supply, the desalination of water is necessary. Nobody had predicted this kind of facility would be needed in Tuvalu. In the past, people could live with only rainwater for their daily needs. Nowadays, they have to pay for water. Could anyone have ever imagined the people would have to buy water? They have to work until late in the evening to provide water for the many people who want to buy it during the prolonged dry season. This is a garbage dump at the end of the island. Many people live in the huge piles of waste. Discharged water from a pig pen was not treated at all. These pose threats to human health and the marine environment as well. Waste treatment is another problem to solve. Though we stayed for only a short period, we got to know some of the truth about Tuvalu. One thing is that there had been no such declaration to abandon the land of Tuvalu in 2001. The news reports that the Tuvaluan government had declared they would abandon their land was not true. They are determined to stay in their home country. Uh, we still hold on to our land since 2001, and we are working so hard in trying to revive Tuvalu. We don't, we, I, I can't recall Tuvalu declaring to leave the land. Moreover, the immigration program of New Zealand was an ordinary one and had nothing to do with the climate refugee program. Yet, because the condition of the immigration program is so strict that only young people qualify for the opportunity to go to New Zealand, it means they have to be separated from their old parents. After all, it is the two balloons who are affected by all the impacts of climate change caused by industrialized countries. It doesn't mean there is no hope. There are a variety of activities underway by foreign governments and NGOs working for a sustainable Tuvalu. We wanted to know how they help Tuvalu. 
This farm, located across the runway, is managed and supported by the government of Taiwan. The area under cultivation was wider than we had thought. There were many vegetables and fruits which are hard to get into a loop. The Taiwanese government had sent experts to teach the local people how to grow vegetables. They could provide fresh vegetables and fruits at low prices for local people, which made the farm very popular. 그리고 외국 코나프티선 말고 외국 섬에서 이거를 제가 지금 여기가 지금 보는 탑권 사람인데 그 사람이 총몇 사람 이렇게 지금 일하고 있다고 합니다. Another benefit of the farm is to create jobs for local people. As if all the crops know their hope, they have grown well. The person who we met is Jillian from France, working for an NGO called Alofa Tuvalu. Big box. Big box. It looks like so bad. Today she got a box delivered. There were an electric motorcycle and a solar cooker in the box. Because of the strong sunlight, it is very useful here. It can reduce fossil fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Her dedication to Tuvalu knows no measure. Well, I chose to work with Tuvalu and only Tuvalu because Tuvalu is the symbol of what is going to happen to us if we don't do something. And if we can save Tuvalu, then we are sure that we can save a lot of other countries. Because Tuvalu is the first in country, all country, I mean not territory, a whole country, even small, which will disappear because of climate change if we don't do something. So. We hope the solar cookers could be provided to all Tuvaluans in the near future. Besides, there is a foreign country that built a power plant to generate electricity for Tuvalu. The Japanese government provided both fire engines and desalination facilities. <coughs> IPPF opened an office to educate and help people for their health care and birth control. The European Union provided large water tanks for the people suffering from water shortage. Just then, unexpected rainwater filled up the empty water tanks. The Tuvaluan government is actively coping with the situation caused by climate change. This uh, mangrove uh, planting here uh, is a project that uh, carried out by the Funafuti Council to help the erosion. They, they will transplant this when they grow up to the seafront to stop the erosion of soil there. Mangrove trees grow well around the areas with salt water. Mangrove seedlings will be transplanted to the coastal area later to prevent the coast from being eroded. As we meet more Tuvaluan people, we come to know that they're really concerned about the crisis in Tuvalu caused by climate change. However, we also realize that none of them want to leave their home country because of climate change. They just wish the international community could understand what they want. Well, I have a lot of messages to the international community 
And um, to put it simply, is to say, um, stop the injustice treatment that you are doing to us. Because what we are suffering is not a consequence of what we did, it is what they did. So please stop the injustices and treat us equally with human rights as you ought to be treated. They are right. The problem caused by climate change is not just an environmental problem, but a question of human rights. The human rights of the people of Tuvalu are being violated, while industrialized countries won't do much to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. The main message is that this is our heritage, and we have the right to remain on our country. No one, either the, the industrialized countries or the developed countries or whoever, through their experts, has the right to take us away from this land. Nobody has the right to make Tuvaluans move to another place, which will deprive them of their heritage. The lives in Tuvalu have neither been rich nor poor. The people of Tuvalu may be happier than us, because they live in harmony with nature. It is not a fundamental solution to global warming to make them move to other places. As every nation has its own cultural heritage, they also have their own, which cannot be replaced or interchanged with any other one. When we find a way for them to pass their cultural heritage down to their descendants, we can really solve the problem of global warming. They are faced with a growing threat caused by global warming. If responsible countries fail to take appropriate measures to combat climate change, the future for the children may disappear, not only of Tuvalu, but ours as well. Remember, if Tuvalu goes down today, we will follow them tomorrow. Quite simple, and then all the Tuvaluan people are very 
they are around the airport. They see all the, they are quite close because they are an isolated island. They, there is no place to go for them. So uh, the flight from PG twice per week is their pleasure to see. And then all the people getting down from the plane, they know, they, they all know each other. And then thirdly, as, as I mentioned here, from the, the end of the, 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 the end of the Pnaputi, uh, I took the, uh, I took the, uh, the old bike. It took like 30 minutes. If I go to 30 minutes, it's end. And then people's life is quite simple. And then I was astonished to see sea level is quite country. Quite deep. Just, just my house, and then I just step my step further, and I could see my I could see the sea. And then a lot of the old, a lot of the uh, soil intrusion to the soil intrusion to the to the house, and then to the field, to the to the even even people's the kitchen like that. I have seen that a lot, and also the. When a uh, flight doesn't come, the Pnafti airport in that place, as you see, that's the people's playground, and then even people they can stay, they could they could sleep there in the night of the in the night of the uh, season. So uh, that's quite a uh, simple life they enjoy. But and then as soon as I uh, I got arrived, there, I asked them, do you do you want to leave to another, do you want to stay here or leave to another country like? Australia or New Zealand. They are dreaming countries sometimes like the New Zealand and Australia. But, but uh, I made a question like 35, but the, among them, the two people are saying, yes, maybe. The other all three said that they would not go. They would not go. I want to stay here. So even though our, our country will be submerging, I will be submerged by my, by my nation, I asked them why. So uh, this is my uh, this is my uh, my heritage. My heritage is always here. So how can I how can how I cannot sub sub submerging with my uh, my heritage? They said. <coughs> and then two people they said yes or maybe. I asked them why you wanted to go to another country. They said probably because of education, my kid. So uh, they said like that. And then I I asked the people. Is that real? Your country gave up uh, your your land. Most of people, no, that's not the, that's not the that's not the, I never heard. And then even I met the government, the people they said no, I never we never say it like that. But the Korean mass media, so they told us to value they gave up their land. Such of such of news I got, and then I want to check that. And then and also I met the people who are waiting. For immigration, put on New Zealand or Australia. I was under the category of the environmental refugee. I was thinking any people from both that nation, New Zealand or Australia, they will accept, right? That's the refugee concept. If they want to, because of the we are causing climate change. <coughs> I, the thing I, the thing that I know, there was. New Zealand government, government they, are all, they, they only accept young person who could speak, young uh, male, or who could speak uh, English very well. They only accept all the peoples. And then Tuvalu is a very small nation, as they are, their, their kinship is very strong. And then they are, they are living together with a cousin and mother and father like that. So I am living, the, the person that I met, He's waiting for the final movie to New Zealand because he's a young man and then he left. He will leave in his mother in Tuvalu because the New Zealand government did not accept his mother, right? So uh, he's leaving to the New Zealand and then he's very much concerned about the, uh, his mother because his mother and his kid will be in uh, Tuvalu. So that's the things that I found out in in New Zealand, and then also in the documentaries, in the documentary, they not Tuvalu means eight island originally, but now in 
currently they have nine islands actually, because one, uh, one, uh, one island was added up to their nation. And as you see, one small uh, island, they are disappearing right now. And then some people who do not accept concept of the climate change, no, 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 that's natural, that's natural. So uh, this, it doesn't, the disappearing island is not the coding, it's not caused by climate change. And then, and also, the person who come from World Bank, who are doing project in Tuvalu, they are saying, ah, Tuvalu, the Tuvaluans, they are, they are speaking, oh, we are a shakehold, we are the, we are the victims of the climate change, but that's not true. So they, even though they are saying, we do not have, we, we do not have much water like that, but, but that doesn't really reason from the climate change is that they, the reason what, the reason that they say like that is they really want to get the money from the their donations. So that's the, that's the, that's the both side. But mostly local people, <coughs> they are, even though their education level is not that high like South Koreans, but they know all understand climate change. And then they understand all of what is happening, what is real change for their daily life. They were saying, surely this is the sand beach, but sand beach was the like 10 years of 10 years ago too, like this big, but currently like this much. So why uh, this absolutely change of the climate change? And also they were saying, it was a shock to me, uh, people they are buying the water, buying the water. And then, even though they do have a very low income, as I don't see where they get the money because that's a small island, a small nation. I don't, I don't see anything income source for for those, for those people. But they, they need to buy water, and then all the people they are waiting on, they are they try to buy the water. They are waiting on the line that on the, that car. They are waiting for the that car, and then car giving the water, and then they are paying money like this. So uh, even though they have the each house, they have a big trunk, big tank for water, a uh, harvesting rain water. So uh, even though those water uh, are not enough for their survival. So uh, so I could see as as a Julian from France, she mentioned why I asked her why you why you choose Tuvalu. So this is the symbol of the climate change. If we save the Tuvalu, we could save the world. And then I brought the Tuvaluans to South Korea, and then he traveled you know, 11 cities in South Korea. <coughs> in that time, the, he, he said, we are helpless country. We are helpless people. I probably you could understand what I when I went when I went to Tuvalu. They they do not have much resource for their living, but they are enjoying swimming. They are catching the fish just like a simple way of life, and then they are eating just the papuka papuka, and then they just <coughs> eating like raw fish. As soon as they catch the fish, they eat in the in the in the sea. I asked them, how can you eat the uh, raw fish like that? They have a way to eat. So it's just like I don't know the English word. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they are they are they are they are enjoying very simple life. But the, I could I really understood understand. From our daily consumption, from our over consumption, they are suffering. They have that suffering. They are suffering from our uh, behavior. They behave. I really, I really see that. And then when they come to, they say, so, uh, so we are the just helpless people. If people like you do not act in daily, how could we survive? So your action is so important. Who are our survivor? Not your enjoyable life. Who are our survivor? We really need your, your, uh, not to overconsumption like that. So, uh, uh, 
I, uh, I, I try to promote a uh, cooperative project between South Korea and then and, uh, Tuvalu. But that, after that project, I, uh, I went to the other country. I didn't promote that. But then now I came back again, and then I really want to promote the cooperative project between Korea and Tuvalu. So, uh, so, uh, uh, what, the, what they said was, uh, your overconsumption is injustice, they said. So because your overconsumption is really hard. Your overconsumption makes our country submerged. submerged. So uh, in that time, I really, I, uh, I strongly, I, I had a strong feeling we should do some real action in daily life. So as my friend from, I, as, I, as my friend Julian, and he, he do some daily action, even though it's very much simple, we really need that kind of action for the survival of Tuvalu nations of people. That's the my uh, message from the documentary, and that's my message from the trip to Tuvalu. Thank you. Right okay. Now we're going to begin the question and answer portion of the talk. If you did not receive a piece of paper when you came in, you can raise your hand and one of our volunteers will give you a piece of paper for you to write your question on. Uh, please do not raise your hand to ask the question directly. We prefer that you uh, submit it in a written format. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, we'll start with a few questions a little bit related to you. Uh, when did you first become interested in climate change? Climate change, 1996. <clears throat> what happened? Uh, not, not, my, uh, not, not my daily life. As a, as a step at the environmental organization, I went to uh, Europe at the uh, climate change, UN Climate Change Convention in 1997 in Kyoto. In that time, I have seen huge conference, huge people's action. So uh, we are saying we are saying no exit, no uh, the 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 no Chevron, no uh, no Shell company, no Samsung like that. All the big oil company we are against. And then in that time, I have seen uh, so many uh, people's behavior, people's action to against climate change, and that's my uh, first motivation to join climate change. And then I uh, through my work, I went to the third world countries, especially like. Uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Cambodia like that, I have seen they are so happy even though from my, first, my, from my point of view, even though they do not have much, we do have much, they even they do not have much, they are so happy, we do have much, but we are not happy. Those are things are related to climate change issues. Okay. Uh, you talked a little bit about uh, people's actions, people's behaviors. Uh, what have you done in your own life, everyday life, to combat climate change? Mm -hmm. When I joined to uh, my organization, uh, normally uh, I didn't, use, I didn't have any home appliances. So like the like the refrigerator, like the TV, like I don't have any. I really want to try to promote my life to be like as natural. And then uh, and then I really, but now I have the home, some of the home appliances, and now I I prefer work. From my house to my from my house to my to my uh, work office and what else? I am not to waste much of the uh, uh, piece of paper, and then I do not want to. Especially my main theme is I do not want to overconsumption. That's my main theme for my daily life. Okay. Can you talk about some of the impacts of climate change here in Korea? What are some impacts you might see here? After I just got back from the other country, that's why for, uh, for three years I was not here. So that's why I don't really know about what happened in South Korea for those three years. But I recognize the, uh, the normally uh, apple. Apple was uh, mm, cultivated and harvested in uh, Gyeongsang province. So recently, people in Gangwon, they could, they could cultivate it, they could harvest it. I was asking, 
why actually in one week, why actually in one month? So there is a climate change. Mm -hmm. So uh, and also that's in my the first assumption from climate change. What happened in South Korea and I got back from another state, another country. Okay. And also. Okay. Okay. Now we have some questions specifically related to to Baloo. Yeah. Uh, first is a very really basic question. What is the population of Tuvalu? So Tuvalu is the uh, nine island, yeah. composed, of, composed of nine island, but the whole island, they have the uh, one thousand. No, 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 ten thousand okay. population. Ten thousand. And then in Krakuti, which is the main capital, they five thousand. Half of the people, they are living in Krakuti. Okay. And uh, how long has Tuvalu been inhabited? How long have people lived there? Oh, that's, that's I didn't know. Okay. But the, but the people in the documentary, they just said, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't know actually about that, how long they lived there. Okay. Uh, here's another uh, question about Tuvalu in general. Um, is there any historical account of earlier flooding in on the island? Ah, in about the history of flooding? The, uh, in the document, in documentary, uh, we were saying about the king tide, mm -hmm. uh, king tide, which is the uh, from the November to March, mm -hmm. they have a king tide. So all the, uh, basically, they do have a tide, the, the like big tide like this. But the only, the bigger they have, but not not like that, not like that too much, not like that big high. So that's after after the big hit, they call it king tide. Has the king time been consistent? Has it yeah. come every year? Yeah, every year. So whenever it comes, it comes to the people, they they cannot survive there. All the water come to their house and their kitchen. They need to move, they need to move and down like that. So that's the, they told me that's hard the times for their life. They told me even before they have that, but they not like that hard, not like that serious. They couldn't it could be managed. It was, but recently. They understood climate change happens. They said it couldn't. They they could not manage it. They said. Okay. When has this king tide started? When oh, did it start? So they told me they the people in the documentary they told me big stuff like that is ten years ago like that, you know, fifteen or ten years ago like that. Okay. And uh, how much of the population of Tuvalu has left for other countries? You mentioned that a lot of people want to stay, but yeah. of the people who have left, has it been a large portion of the population or not? You mean really? stay, stay or so left? Just how many have I went away? Think, I don't think many. Okay. So uh, in Tunapute, uh, I met, they told me uh, after uh, since <coughs> government of New Zealand, they were saying we're going to accept the refugee and 10 people, 10 uh, family mm -hmm. members. They they applied, but the half of them they were not accepted. So half of them they accepted. So sort of like this. So but they basically they don't they don't do they do not go to other nations like that. Uh, which they, they said they said if if I go there I I cannot my life is totally change. So I am afraid of that. They told me like that. Uh, you mentioned uh, New Zealand and Australia. Are those the two major countries that have agreed to accept, or that have been interested, or that the two little people have been interested in uh, going to, if possible? I, I don't think local people in Tuvalu are interested to go to that country, but the New Zealand and Australia, they are the nearest country from the island, and then climate change, the big issue, they want to, how do I say? They want to do, ah, we are doing something for the submerged country. That's why we do like this. 
So like the decoration like that, I think, but they don't really, if, they, if it's not that great, they need to upset the people who are suffering from the climate change, but they had a, they had a checking point. Can you speak to you, Shibella, or you are, your age is from the 20 to, 20 to 45 like that? You, under the, above that, they do not accept like that. So people say this is not local, I am not saying. Local people, this is not real, they do not accept real, uh, they do not know real form of terminology of the refugee. Okay. Uh, where did that rumor come from that the people of Tuvalu agreed to give up their land? Where did that come from? I don't know actually. So, but I have seen that they, I have, I have read that the uh, news from the uh, Korean newspaper took that rumor, and then we were questioning, is that real? And then we really, we really want to check is that how can one country can give up their land? And then, but if that climate, if that comes from climate change, we need to do real action because the one country gave up their land. And then when I went there, so they did not give up, they, they asked international help. Has that rumor come up anywhere else in the world or only in Korea, do you think? I think from Korea. I have only in Korea. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, in the short term, what have the people of Tuvalu done to combat the flooding and the erosion? Uh -huh. In their countries. So when I went to the uh, uh, Tuvalu, I have seen the people in the uh, seashore. Oh. They are transplanting uh, mangrove, okay. and also uh, they are planting, and also they are taking part in workshop for the for the uh, uh, solar solar energy. And then a lot of a lot of the energy come from a lot of natural energy, especially come from solar in in Tuvalu. But they don't, they are not aware of that, right? But the but the international people are getting there and then discuss. We can get energy from uh, natural na nature. They got, they are taking part in, and then they understood that we could get energy from the nature. And then they are taking part in workshop, and then they are showing. They are, they are also practicing bioenergy. So even I didn't see that really, but I heard that from okay. the government. Uh, since when have the people of Tulu been paying for water? How long have they been paying for water? Ah, that was the, from my understanding, I think that was the Syrian, Syrian four years ago from that 2009. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, someone wants to know, Temperature changes have been common throughout all of Earth's history. Um, what portion, or can you tell us what portion of uh, current temperature changes ah. are man-made versus natural? Do you have an idea, or can you give us a little <laughs> insight about that? So I'm not. I was not living there, so I just, I just, I just heard from the people, and then they say dry season, they have a dry season and a rainy season, like this, like something hung like weather. But the dry season is longer, 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 much longer. And then even ordinary citizens, even though who, who do not have scientific knowledge of the climate change, they, they, they directly told me dry season is much, much longer than that before. That's why they could recognize it. this might be climate change. And then, and then one thing, uh, when uh, people, survivors, when they come to South Korea, Koreans ask them, uh, the, you are saying the climate, you are suffering from the climate change because you wanted to help from us, like some Australian guy talk in Tuvalu. So, uh, but, he, but he said, we are not saying we are suffering from climate change. The international community, like the United Nations, they are saying we are suffering from climate change. So exactly, he said. Do you know what I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to always check a lot of the time, so I'm always checking another you know, question. So I, I think I got the gist of it. Um, let's see. Do you have any plans to return? To uh, to Tuvalu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will, Can we I, talk about that a little bit? If I will, if I will, 
I didn't plan, I didn't specifically plan yet, but if I will go to Tuvalu again, I really want to make the survey, uh, survey ship, survey ship, and then I can <coughs> limit 5,000 people at, in, in Panapati. I really want to uh, make a question to them and then, and then I want to um, publish. That is their response. That's the that's what, what we needed to do, what it needed to put value like that's what I that's my plan. I okay. yeah. Um when do you plan to do that? Anytime soon or in the next few years? I think yeah, I think two or three years like that. I need to get a funding first. Yeah. So uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're almost done. We've got a few more questions here. Uh, what one thing can a person do in his or her life to help save the environment or to mitigate the impact of climate change? That's what I ask the people. Hmm. To the well, people. If you could give us one bit of advice, what major thing do you think uh, would be the best thing for most people to change? Which behavior is the so, best one to change? Normally, because of the if the oil price fluctuation, because of the oil price fluctuation, we are we are we decide using a car or not, right? So uh, not oil, not oil price fluctuation as a, as our daily life for care for the environment and nature. I think I want people to use uh, uh, the public transportation. Actually, I was in when I was in America. The, all the people that I know, they have a car, but I am the only person who do not have a car. So uh, I enjoy, really enjoy the walking from from here to here, and then through the, my uh, working, I met so many local people. I really enjoy to talking with them, what is their life like, if we're basically uh, 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 African-American people. And then uh, I really enjoyed the working, gave me a lot of impression, a lot of insight. So uh, I don't know if you do it in Korea, but the, uh, I think that's the one thing that I want to suggest. And then if you grow the plant in your daily life, and then you could have more uh, sympathy for the nature and uh, love. Okay. Uh, has there been any sort of discussion or movement among NGOs or governments to uh, hold countries accountable or corporations accountable for uh, the impact that they're having on the on the world in, in South Korea in the world in general or in South Korea if you know anything specific about South Korea you can talk about that so in South Korean subject I just got back from one of the nations I think I really get into that movement yet. But the in a, in a, in a, now I am organizing international conference for Amazon, and then uh, I am I want to bring Amazon people to South Korea, and then Amazon rainforest is disrupting right now because of the oil development, right? So uh, so uh, worldwide, um, people in USA, people in Amazon, they are they are they are connecting together, they are doing a solidarity to make uh, Chevron and Shell accountable and also in Nigeria there is Ogoni Land mm -hmm. and then Ogoni Land then uh, Ogoni Land is the original tribe they live there and then 50 years ago Nigerian government they entered that Ogoni Land that we are giving you uh, just big uh, economic development due to the oil development but that, that is done by a Shell company Shell and then local people, they are expecting a uh, dream stage, but it never happened because the, a lot of pipeline going on and then, and, and then uh, even the small key, they are, they are playing with the pipeline. And then pipeline just a fire, they are dying like that. So uh, for that issue, uh, uh, internationally uh, uh, activists, campaigners, environmentalists, we are working together to make show Accountable. So okay. that's what I know. Okay. So yeah, I don't go to the South Korean context. Uh, that's okay. Um, okay, this will be our last question for the Q and A. Can you share with us your most memorable moment uh, of all of your experiences in Tuvalu? In Tuvalu yes. or another country? 
If you have another one that you would like to share, sure, you can share that too. Yeah. The, 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 my, uh, the most uh, uh, influential times for me, when I went to Colombia, I met the uh, people from Amazon. And then in there, also our country, we are, we are trying to build with them like that in, in Amazon also uh, because of the government oil development, they are <coughs> displaced me and then they are killed by the government because of their gains. So when I met the uh, uh, Amazon people from Colombia or Peru or Brazil, they were saying, Juni, the nature, uh, how do I say? Uh, their, their saying to me was very, very uh, good and very influential to me. And then one thing, they, uh, they compare our life to the, to the animal, to the animal. So first one, we used to be like the jaguar. So I asked them, why jaguar? So jaguar is quite... Uh, Azure. 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 Azure? Yeah. Uh, Jaguar is quite Azure. They as an activist, as a... No, I'm so sorry, activist. They as a people who live in the world, we need to be Azure to watch what big corporations do. Right? And then we need to carefully see what they do, and then we need to uh, act right time. And then secondly, he said we should be like Toksuri, uh, eagles. But I said why? And then eagle has a eagle fly from big, big uh, up in the sky, and then he could he and she could see very big. Uh, he could draw a big thing, right? And as a human being, we need to we need to have a uh, capacity or part. Capacity. We didn't have a capacity to do that, and thirdly, uh, he uh, he told me monkey, it's monkey. So uh, I asked him why monkey. So he said, we always we don't we should not be always serious. Sometimes we should be uh, enjoy our life. So uh, you are always we are always uh, how do I say busy to watching big company do like this. Uh, government like that, but some, sometimes we need to enjoy by ourselves, like dancing like that. So uh, three uh, animals, he told me that was the real, really fascination to me. And then he's talk about the nature, I couldn't remember that, but in that time, I cannot speak Spanish, and then I, my friend was a translator, and then a lot of people was here, and then my, trans my friend who couldn't speak Spanish, he, she never returned what he said to me because she was so, she was so touched by Amazon people's word. She was just, oh, like, and then she could not, she cannot forward that translate what he said to me in English. I talked, I talked to her, please, please, and oh, Julia, I was so fascinated by his word. I could have forward it to you, and then he said. But I got all the word after word, and that it really fascinated me. And then that message in that time keep my life uh, continuation for the for the caring for the environment. Okay, great. Thank you. That's the end of the question and answer portion of the talk. Let's give her a round of applause.